Well, good evening on this fourth night of Hanukkah. One, two, three, four, we're counting down to eight. Eight days of Hanukkah, right? What are there? There's 12 days of Christmas on the first day of Christmas, right? Eight days of Hanukkah. And um, so we're on day four. And this gives us an opportunity to talk about an interesting debate that happened throughout history regarding Hanukkah. Now, some of you have heard the old saying, uh, two Jews, three opinions. Okay, you've heard that saying. Uh, I live with the reality of three Jews, 15 opinions. I, 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 that, that keeps it fun and interesting around here. Um, but there is a very interesting dynamic within the mindset. And again, we, we say the Jewish people, but I would say there's an interesting mindset within biblical Christianity or biblical faith of, of, of debating with God, of questioning God, of, of having conversation back and forth. Um, Moses is going back and forth with God about destroying the Jewish people and, and just many, many different examples. And so it's given rise within the Jewish tradition to a mindset of saying, listen, it is not wrong to challenge things. It's not wrong to challenge our ways of thinking. In fact, there's a lot of good that can come from that. However, one of the guidelines, and it's a guideline I hope all three of you learn and live by, was the question, and I think it was Rabbi Hillel, he said, just make sure if you're going to argue that it's an argument for the sake of heaven. And what did that mean? It meant that your arguments could not come from your carnal nature, from your, from your pride, from your hurt, from your arrogance, from your, your, your earthly self. Your arguments, if you were going to argue, had to be, I'm arguing on behalf of something eternal. I'm arguing to make the person I'm arguing with a better person. I'm arguing to cause the other person that I'm arguing with to come into greater righteousness, not to prove them wrong and not to write them off, but to call them to be more, to be deeper, to be higher. And so we come into this fourth night of Hanukkah and there is a fight. There's a debate in Jewish tradition about lighting the menorah. And here's what it is. It is the house of uh, Shammai against the house of Hillel. And this is a very common thing. Uh, Hillel and Shammai were two very famous rabbis and they would just, they were kind of like John MacArthur and Benny Hinn. I, <laughs> but I don't know where that's gonna go on here. But they, they were the utter opposite of each other theologically, though they both were Jews. Well, Shammai focused on the military victory of Hanukkah. The military victory of who? Who won the victory? What was the name? The family name? Maccabees. The Maccabees, right? Which meant? Hammer. The hammer. And their father was the seven sons. The father's name begins with an M? Matasyahu or Matthias. And the most famous son was, was it Joshua or Jacob? Judah. Judah Maccabee, I think it was. Anyway, Shammai said, we're focusing on the military victory. And during the years that they could not sacrifice, uh, and this gets kind of confusing, but I'll get to the point because otherwise just skip the confusing part. During the years they couldn't sacrifice in the temple because Antiochus IV had the, the idols set up, they missed the Feast of Tabernacles um, uh, offerings. And so he said, we should count backwards. He said, we should light all eight candles and each night one less should be lit because we're, we're catching up. We're celebrating the military victory. We're catching up and, and getting it caught up to where we should be. But Hillel said, no, 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 no. We're not celebrating the military victory. We're not focusing on the military victory. We're focusing on the miracle of the oil, the eight days of the oil. And we're focusing on that aspect. Now folks, both of these things were miraculous. Both of these things were powerful. Would, would they have 
would they have relit the menorah with the one vial of oil if they had not won the military victory? No. No. The idol would still be in the temple. They wouldn't have sent for the oil. They wouldn't have rededicated the temple. The military victory was necessary. Even today, Israel has got to win this military victory. And in our lives, we have to do the practical things to ensure what God has called us to protect and to cover and to do. There's a practical side that we have to do. But then there was the supernatural side. And that was that out of one jar of oil, eight days came. So Shammai said, we have to celebrate the military victory, honor the military victory and count backwards. Hillel said, no, 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 we're celebrating the spiritual victory and we're celebrating the supernatural intervention. And what I want to say to us is this, both are absolutely crucial and necessary. Show me one Bible story where God doesn't have a partner. Other than creation, other than creation, God partners with humanity every step along the way. Even Adam in the garden, God says to Adam, you take care of this garden. You tend the garden. God created it, but Adam, you have to take care of it. And so both of these things are necessary. Shammai was right. We needed the military victory. Hillel was right. We needed the intervention of God. But at the end of the day, we could only light in one direction. And so Hillel won and we light in the direction of the eight days. So according to this way of thinking, Hanukkah points us not just to one historic military victory or miracle, but the ongoing supernatural miracle that God's light is lit, is lit in our hearts. God's holiness burns in our hearts each and every day when we light the candle of his presence. So with that, we are on the fourth night of Hanukkah. And Daniel, you're going to do the honors tonight. There we go. And we pray that it's amazing to see more and more Christians starting to celebrate this holiday that is a part of our New Testament. Our Christian Bible talks about Jesus. You won't find the word Hanukkah. You'll find it under the phrase Feast of Dedication. Feast of Dedication. That, oh, go ahead. Yeah. That came to be known as Hanukkah. I'm sorry, son. I thought you were lighting. Good. That's very respectful of you. Beautiful. There we go. And again, the center candle, what is the center one called? The Shamash candle. And then the four nights of Hanukkah. And let's say the blessing. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Ladlik Shanayir Shel Hanukkah. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who causes us to light, gives us the command to light the lights of Hanukkah. Duke has come to celebrate with us. Here's a Duke. There you are. Duke came to celebrate. From our home to yours, happy Hanukkah.